Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our remote working webinar. This session should last approximately 20 minutes, so there will be plenty of time for questions. Uh, please remain muted during the session, though, and enter any questions that you have in the meeting chat. Um, I'll then answer the questions at the end from that meeting chat. Any questions that we're not able to answer during the session uh, will be in the frequently asked questions section on the webinar web page once the webinar is being uploaded. There is also a slideshow that will go with uh, the presentation. However, I'm actually going to be using the training database today so that I can show you what's going to happen live when you're working remotely. So during the session today, we're going to have a brief introduction to remote working. I'm then going to log into our training database so that you can see that happening in real time. We'll select a device to make and receive our calls through. I'll then show you inbound and outbound calls through the system and then we'll look at logging out. There are also some customizable features on the user console, so I'll show you what you can change on the console there. So Surgery Connect allows users to log in from anywhere where you can access the internet. So you don't need to be in the practice to use the system. You can be using Surgery Connect as though you're in the practice, even using your internal short dial numbers to transfer calls, and patients don't know any difference. You can also select the device that you want to use to make and receive those calls on. So when you're logging in remotely, um, obviously you're going to need a laptop or a PC that you can access the internet on, and then you're going to visit exactly the same web page as you would do normally if you're in the practice and opening up the user console. So that's our single sign on site. When you get to that site, as usual, you're going to be asked to log in. So within the login box, I'm going to input my NHS email address. I'm going to be using Mickey Smith today for our demonstration. And then enter my password. If you ever forget your password, you can use the forgotten password link at the bottom of this page. So passwords can be reset for individual users via the login just by clicking on forgotten password. That will then send a password reset email to their NHS email address and they can set the password, reset the password straight away from this screen. When I click login as a standard user, I'm going to get the usual four boxes on the screen. As supervisors, obviously you get your normal nine, even if you're logging in remotely. I'm going to head for the user console, which is where we head on a day-to-day -day basis. That will then load up the screen that you'll be used to seeing. So you've got your calls over on the left hand side that are at the moment on our most recent calls. And then we have the users over here on the right. To select the device that you want to use to make and receive your calls and to set yourself as available if you'd logged out on the user console the last time. If you click on your initials in the top right hand corner of the screen, you can then select from the available devices that you have in order to forward your calls through. You can also change your status from here. So because I'm working remotely, I'm going to select my soft phone. If I was in the practice and logged into a desk phone, it would default to my work number. And I also have a personal mobile number here that's been added by the practice manager so that I'm able to forward my calls to that number as well. In the user status here, I can change my status uh, which would be just the same as logging into a desk phone within the practice. So I can make myself available. That will then turn me light grey in the user list and mean that calls can now come through. So whilst I'm on the user console here, when a call comes through, it will ring on the screen and I'm then able to answer and reject that call directly from the screen. So we have a call coming in at the moment. You may also get a um, Windows pop up that will show you that you have an incoming call. If you can't see where the dialer is on the screen to answer the call, if you click on dial number at the top, it will then bring the dialer up onto the screen. Now you can see that I have a reject and an answer button. So if I click on the answer button, that will then take the call from the queue. Give me the whisper to tell me that that's come through the, through the physiotherapy group and I now have a fully functioning phone on the screen of my laptop. So I can now mute my microphone if I need to. I can put the call on hold 
And when I put the call on hold, it will play the caller music just like it does in the practice. I've then got a resume button so that I can bring that call back and carry on my conversation with that particular caller. I can also transfer this call and you may notice that there's a uh, the video icon missing off this screen. So because this is a landline number and not compatible with video calls, you won't have the option to begin that video call. If I click on the transfer button, I'm then able to transfer this call um, through to anybody in the practice or to any external number. So once I've worked out who I'm going to transfer it to, and I'm going to go through to Rose Tyler here, I've got her extension number on the screen. I could use the search facility at the top to search for her name if I need to, to get the number on the screen there. But I can see Rose's extension number is 201. So I'm going to click on the transfer button. I can then type in the number that I want to um, send that call to, and I can either use the buttons on the screen or type that in using my keyboard. If I scroll down slightly, I've then got either a cancel or a dial button. So I can carry on with the transfer if I hit dial, and that will then call out to Rose. Once we're ready, I can then use the transfer button again to complete that transfer. As you can see, our original call is on hold. It's now connecting to Rose, I hope. Okay, and that would then transfer the call through to the number that you dialed. Okay, I'm going to give Rose a call just to make sure that that call went okay. So I can either call her number directly from the screen, um, or I can click on Rose's name and then click on the call button, and that will use the click to call technology to connect through the dialer on the screen and then begin the call with Rose. Direct call. And there we can see that the call is now connected with Rose there. I can use the click to call exactly the same on the uh, group number. So I can click on the 330 here. I get a little call button on the screen. And when I click that, it will ring whoever is next available within that team. I can also call any number from the external directory. So if I click onto the directory on the end here, I can then search through the directory entries just like I would do um, with the entries in the internal directory. Search for John Jones. There's his contact detail, so I now have his mobile number on the screen. I could type that number into the dialer manually, but if I just hit the call button, it will actually call out to that number directly through the dialer on the screen here. Now, if the number is nowhere on Surgery Connect, I can type the number in manually onto the screen. Um, so I could type in a mobile number here. I can also use my keyboard to do that, which I find a lot easier. And then once I have the number in, I can click on the green phone to begin an audio call. Or because this is a mobile number, it's also giving me the option to invite this caller straight to a video call. So if I click on the video icon, it will send out the um, text message that it would normally send with the link to that video call and then the patient can begin the video call from there. If I click on the green phone though that's going to begin an audio call with that particular caller. And again as soon as the call is answered I now have a fully functioning phone on the screen and this time because it's a mobile number that I've dialed it's also got our video link on here so that I can now convert this to a video call directly on my screen. If this patient didn't want their call recording because there's no PREC button on the soft phone, you would need to use the keypad to dial star five. And that would pause the recording on Surgery Connect via the soft phone. Star five, once calls connected to a personal number, will also work on that device as well. So if you use your mobile keypad when a call is connected via Surgery Connect, dialing star five would pause the recording on your mobile as well. I'm going to go back to the keypad here and I'm actually going to begin a video call with this particular patient. So I'm going to click on the video link that will ask if I then want to send out a text message with the link to that video call. And when I click on send, it will automatically send the text 
to the number that I've dialed. Now I'm not going to lose connection with the patient until they've said yes we can use their camera and yes they want to begin the video call. That's when your audio call automatically drops and then it will begin ringing on your screen with the video call from the patient. I can then answer that call and um, if you don't have a video connected then obviously it's just going to show a blank screen for yourself but you will get um, your picture down in the corner here and then we have our patient who we can now see. If I maximise that screen, I get a full screen version so that I can better see what that patient is talking about. Again, I've got my keypad here, so if I need to, I can um, mute, uh, I can pause the recording on that particular call. So Melissa is showing us that she has a rash on her hand there. Now the links for these video calls are only valid for 10 minutes so by the time you've done your consultation it's unlikely that that patient would be in, then be able to call you back using the same link um, but they are multi-use so if you do lose connection then they can just reconnect on the same link and that will reconnect the call for you. On your user console obviously you've got your calls on the left hand side so because I'm on a standard user it's only showing calls uh, that Mickey has been involved in and we can see that we've got a few numbers showing here within the calls list. If these were particularly useful contact numbers, um, a standard user can also add these to the central directory just by clicking in the drop down and then clicking add to central directory. I can then give that a name, any of the details that I've captured, and when I click on save, it will then be in the directory for everybody to use straight away. And it will also change the number to a name on the um, user console screen straight away. We've also got our call recordings down the side here, so you can replay any of your particular calls. Supervisors on the system obviously have access to all calls across the system, but even as a standard user, you can replay your own calls. Video calls, which are denoted via the little camera icon in the calls list, um, there's no video recorded, although it will still record the audio for that particular call. Now you can change how this screen is set up. So if you click onto the menu, which is just next to your initials there, in the drop down, you have a settings option on the user console. So if you use the menu in any other console, it will give you the shortcuts to the other consoles that you have access to. But within the user console, you can actually change the settings there. If I click on settings, anything down the left hand side, I can now change on the screen. So within my layout here, um, if you don't want to see quite so much information on your own calls, then you can click on the 50-50 split, which will give you slightly more uh, space there for your contacts. Or if you don't want to see your calls at all, you can actually go all the way over and make it purely contacts. You can also change the number of calls that you show on the page itself. So normally it's set at 15. I've got 20 on here, so it fills my screen uh, with all the calls there. You can also change whether agents are grouped together and whether inbound and outbound calls are coloured um, on the user console. If I click onto the stats boxes, that's all the boxes at the bottom of the screen here. So if I'm not interested in those when I'm working remotely, I can hit show panel at the top and that will remove all of them. Or with show panel activated, I can add or remove individual boxes depending on what I'd like to see at the bottom of the screen. On the calendars tab here, even as a standard user, I would be able to display the calendar on my user console. Uh, standard users can't make any amendments to that calendar. So like as supervisors, if you have the calendars on your screen, you can actually turn them off from automatic and change the modes that are available on your calendars. As standard users, I can see the calendars, but I'm not able to make any changes. So if I worked as part of the uh, prescriptions team, I could have the prescriptions calendar open so that I can see that when that calendar is open and closed. I can do the same thing there with my main calendar as well. On the soft phone tab, I can move the dialer around the screen. So it, normally I keep mine in the bottom right hand corner because it's easy for me then to pull up from the bottom of the screen here and dial a number. But if I wanted to, I could move it over to the left here so that you can dial from the left hand side of the screen or even down the bottom and then it will shrink away down to the little blue bar as normal. Again, if you can't remember where you've popped it, just click on the dial number and that will then pop up on the screen wherever it's hidden.
Now, there is a little bit of admin that everybody needs to do just the first time that they log into the user console. If you're using it for calls all the time, it's not so important. But if you click onto the other tab, there's this session idle timeout, which defaults to 30 minutes. So if you're using the user console for all your calls and you're making and uh, receiving calls regularly, that's absolutely fine. It will give you 30 minutes in between each time that you're on the screen um, and moving your mouse around to keep this screen active. However, if this space is in between, um, so if I'm a clinician working from home, I might not be using the screen every 30 minutes. So I could actually increase that session idle timeout up to 10 hours, which will mean that this web page then will sit in the background all day if it needs to. And if I then need it uh, to call a patient later on in the day, it will still respond without the need for me to log back in. The radio buttons here, I can also change uh, which agents I can see within our user list. So I could take out the logged out agents so it only shows people that are actually logged in to the system and therefore available for a call. So once you've customised your screen, you can just leave that screen um, available all day then and then obviously make any calls that you need via the dialer on the screen. Now, if I wanted my calls to go via my mobile, I can click into my initials and I can then select my mobile from the list of devices here. As soon as I do that, it then puts a call forward notice on my dialer on the screen. So now anybody ringing uh, my internal 224 number, that call will go straight through to my mobile phone. When I answer my mobile phone, I would get the same little whisper that I do in the practice to tell me it's a direct call. And then, when I, I, and then I can answer that call as I would do normally within the practice. I can deal with the call on my mobile as I would do normally, and then when I end the call on my mobile, it will automatically end the call on Surgery Connect there for you. Now, when you're making calls out using your mobile phone, um, again, you can use the click to call technology or I can dial the number in on the dialer on the screen here. So if I wanted to ring Rose, but connect the call first of all to my mobile, I could click on Rose. I get a little call button here. And when I click on call, that will ring my mobile. And then it's ringing out two rows on whichever device she is using to make and receive her calls. Direct call. Okay, and that call is now connected between Mickey and Rose. We're on an outbound call here, so it's showing in blue on our calls list. As soon as I end that call on my mobile phone, the call is ended then via Surgery Connect. Now at the end of the day, you'll need to make sure that you log out of the user console, just like you would do in the practice, to make sure that no calls are coming through to any devices that you're connected to when the surgery is closed. So if I click on my initials again, top right hand corner, I can then select logged out as my status here. That will then mean that no calls now can come through to my extension number. And if I was part of a team that answered inbound calls from patients, obviously it would also stop any patient calls coming through to me as well. OK, once I've logged out here, I can then close down the windows. There are logouts in the menu as well. If you use those, it will then just uh, close everything down for you and make sure that you're logged out ready for when you log in on your next session. So we've had a quick introduction to remote working there. You've seen me logging into the training database using my NHS email address and the password I've set for Surgery Connect, just like we would do in the practice. I've also selected different devices there and shown you how to make inbound and outbound calls directly through the soft phone. We've also looked at logging out and customising that user console 